Understanding how to explain what a p-value is is one of the most difficult concepts in statistics that the vast majority of even people who take statistics class do not understand. So if you think this is hard, you're normal. However, I'm still going to expect you to understand it. So let's go ahead and try to figure this out. We have a p-value that we're given here in this example problem of 0.08. And the example has a null hypothesis where mu is 7 the alternative that it is not equal to 7. We have a sample average of 6.3. We want to figure out how can we use all of that information to interpret that 0.08. What is that 0.08 really the probability of? And so I'm going to go ahead and write it out. I tend to not like the idea of a formula sentence in a way where you just substitute in new numbers, but when it comes to explaining these correctly, it's very difficult to do in your own words. So in class, we will practice doing it in our own words. But for now, just getting uh, some common language you can use is what we're going to start with. So that 0.08 is the probability of finding a sample average as extreme as I did when we assume that mu is 7. So let me write that out there is a 8% chance and that 8% chance comes from our p-value. So 8% comes from the p-value. 8% chance of finding a sample mean as extreme see if we can spell that extreme as and I'm going to stop there because there's a couple word choices I made that I want to make sure I explain I said sample mean instead of sample proportion sample mean because I know I'm dealing with x bar I also use the word as extreme as instead of as low as or as high as because of my alternative hypothesis being not equals. If it was less than I would say as low as, if it was greater than I'd say as high as because it's not equals I'll say as extreme as because that means both directions 6.3 when I assume or when we assume, we can all assume, that mu equals 7. That the null hypothesis is true. That is the assumption we are making. And now that 6.3, that sample mean, comes from this 6.3 right here, our sample mean. And the mu equals 7, of course, is our null hypothesis. So this mu equals 7 comes from up here. So let's read through one more time. There's an 8% chance, there's a p-value chance of finding a sample mean, because we're dealing with means here, as extreme as, because of my alternative hypothesis, 6.3, which is that number that I found, when we assume that mu equals 7, when we assume the null is true. This would be one good way of writing it. There are a number of correct ways to do it. There are countless more incorrect ways to do it. So again, we'll practice uh, adding some variety to that, but this is a really good starting point. Let's go on to an example with proportions. Let's see if we can write out that same type of sentence. In this example, we're given the null hypothesis that our population proportion p is equal to 0.55, that our alternative is that it is greater than 0.55. We have a p hat, a sample proportion of 0.61 and a p-value of 0.021. If we could put any more p's in here, I would go crazy. So let's work with what we have. We want to say something about our 0.021 and that is not a 21%, that is a 2.1%. Remember, shift the decimal two places when you're converting it to percentages if you choose to do that. So there is a 2.1% chance of 
finding a sample proportion, because this time we're dealing with proportions, a sample proportion as large as, because we are thinking uh, larger, as large or larger than and we can convert our p hats and p's to uh, percentages as well if we would like larger than 61 percent when we assume that the population proportion p is equal to 55 percent so let's read that again and highlight where everything came from. First one uh, that we are looking at when we talked about this, uh, we looked at our p-value, and that was the initial thing, the, the chance that things were going to happen. There's a 2.1% chance that uh, we're going to have this thing happen, of finding our sample proportion is larger, larger than 61% percent when we assume that P is equal to 55 percent. So next uh, keywords we looked at was sample proportion and that came from the fact that we were dealing with proportions here not means. After that we had as large or larger than instead of as extreme as and the reason we said that is because uh, larger uh, we are looking greater than in our alternative hypothesis. The 61 percent, that was our sample proportion right here. And then finally the null hypothesis that our proportion is equal to 55 percent. So that's how you would go ahead and write what you are finding. If you were to draw this out in a curve, it might make it a little bit easier uh, to interpret as well. So let's go ahead and just look at that real quickly. On my curve, in the middle, is always going to be my population mu or p. And then I'm going to go out some distance. In this case, I don't know exactly how far. But since I have a very small p-value, I'm going to assume it's probably out to about here that I would shade. And this is where p hat falls on the curve, somewhere way up there. And that area under the curve is my p value, so 0 0.021 or 2.1 percent. So if you think back to using stat key, it's that idea of after you generate your curve from multiple resamples, so many thousands of resamples, you then put your sample data, you adjust the slider on the bottom to your sample data and then it shades that region at the end. If it's a two-sided test, it'll shade both sides, but in this case, it's greater than, so just the right side. And then it figures out what is the area of that relative to the whole thing. So in this case, 2.1%, that's your p-value. There's a 2.1% chance of finding a sample proportion as large or larger than p-hat, 61%, when we assume that p is 55%.